Now that we know a little bit about quantum mechanics, we're now going to talk about spectroscopy. What is spectroscopy? One of the things we should have picked up in our study of quantum mechanics is that energy levels are quantized. So for example, we drew pictures like this, where you have energy going up this way. We would have a ground state energy level, and then we'd have various excited state energy levels like this. Now what we're going to do in spectroscopy is look at transitions between energy levels. For example, we can start here and absorb some energy and go up to this excited state. Or for example, we start here at this ground state, go up to this excited state. Or start here and go to this excited state and so on. This is uh, what's called absorption spectroscopy. We can also have energy levels, same set of energy levels, but instead of absorbing energy and going to a higher energy state, we'll prepare the system at a high energy state and look at the transitions to a lower energy state. In this case, energy is emitted from the system, and uh, one can uh, look at the energy of the light coming out of the system. So this would be emission spectroscopy. And you may have gathered uh, spectroscopy is an experimental area of science, so we're actually measuring things. Typically what one does is measure a spectrum, whose plural is spectra, and when you measure a spectrum, you're measuring intensity on the y-axis and energy on the x-axis. Now, as uh, typically in an experiment, you vary this. For the absorption, you're varying the amount of energy you put into the system. And for emission, you're looking at, you're taking the light coming out of the system and analyzing that through some spectrometer to get the energy of these transitions. And what you'll find uh, typically is you'll get lines coming out and this then is the spectrum. And each one of these lines corresponds to a transition between a lower and higher energy state for absorption or a higher energy state to a lower energy state for emission. So that's what uh, one is doing when one uh, considers transitions between energy levels, that's spectroscopy. Now uh, spectroscopy occurs or you get those transitions between energy levels because an atom or molecule interacts with electromagnetic radiation to transition between uh, energy levels. So electromagnetic radiation is uh, light. Uh, you can think of it in terms of uh, a wave. Light could be a wave or light could be photons. For this uh, we're going to consider light as being a wave and light when I'm using the uh, term light, I mean not only just uh, visible light, but also other re regions of the spectrum. For example, uh, let's look at the spectrum here. This is the electromagnetic spectrum, and right in here in this area is the visible light, corresponds to, this is uh, the wavelength in meters, corresponding to micro uh, to nanometers down in here. Uh, if you go to higher energy, this is uh, represents qualitatively a higher energy, ultraviolet X-ray gamma rays. The wavelength there goes down to maybe 10 to the minus 12th meter. Or if you look at it in terms of frequency, uh, the frequency goes up here about 10 to the 20th. Frequency of visible light is around 10 to the 13th, 10 to the 14th. You can go the other way, go to lower energy, and here you have uh, longer wavelengths of light, typically on the order of like microwaves a centimeter and radio waves are a kilometer or so. So and there the frequency also goes down. So this is the electromagnetic spectrum and depending upon what uh, frequency transitions you have or what energy level transitions you have, you'll be shining light in a different region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Alright, so just exactly what is um, light? That's, that's hitting there, this electromagnetic radiation. Well, uh, we're considering light as an electromagnetic wave, and here is light. This is a direction of propagation, so light is being shined along this way. 
and light has associated with it transverse electromagnetic uh, waves. All right, transverse means the oscillation occurs in a direction which is perpendicular to the direction of propagation. And so we have an electric wave and we have a magnetic wave. That's why they call it electromagnetic radiation. So the electric uh, field um, or electric wave is oscillates perpendicular to the magnetic wave. So we have an oscillation this way and the 90 degrees opposed to that is a magnetic field. And these electric and magnetic fields um, are in phase, meaning they start at the same point, they cross zero at the same point, and so on. So that's what uh, electromagnetic radiation is. And of course you define the wavelength as the distance between, say here, the peak of this wave and the peak of this wave. So the wavelength associated with electric field and magnetic field are the same. For frequency, typically you'd sit at one, po one point, uh, say just say at this point, and count the number of waves uh, crests here that pass that point in one second for example and that will give you the frequency. And we'll find for different kinds of spectroscopy uh, the molecules interacting with the electric field but when we talk about magnetic spectroscopy the molecules interacting with the magnetic field. So there are different wavelengths for different trans uh, different wavelengths for different transitions and let's just briefly uh, mention those. If we go and look at these energy levels here, we have, we've talked about electronic, vibrational, and rotational energy levels in our study of quantum mechanics. And then we have a, a fourth one, which we haven't quite mentioned yet, but we will at the end of this spectroscopy unit, uh, that's magnetic. Uh, ESR, electron spin resonance, and NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance. Let's look at these three first. All right, we have electronic energy levels, and let me just draw two of them here. Within the electronic energy level, we have vibrational energy levels, both in the ground state and excited state. And then within each uh, rot um, electronic and vibrational, we have rotational energy states. So it's like this. So we have a whole bunch of different energy states. And if we look at transitions between the two, or between two energy levels, from here to here, this would be an electronic transition. And that occurs at one wavelength. And then at a lower wavelength, you can look at vibrational transitions and then you can also even at a, a even um, sorry longer wavelength vibrational and even longer wavelength you can look at it rotational so if we look at just these three kinds of spectroscopy electronic will be the highest energy corresponding to the smallest wavelength or the largest frequency vibrational will be next and then a rotational so you can look at, uh, we'll talk about selection rules, but you can look at a transition from here to here, that will be electronic. From here to here, that will be vibrational. And from here to here, so I drew it too small here, that will be rotational. So you have different kinds of uh, transitions, and we'll talk about magnetic transitions after we talk about these three first. Another way to draw this, if we look at, for example, energy, uh, versus distance R and let's take a molecule like this and the distance R is a distance is a diatomic molecule R will be the distance between the two nuclei and we saw in our study for uh, the H2 atom or the H2 ion that we'll get things like this so this would be an electronic energy level because uh, we solved the Schrodinger equation for the electron. And then we might have an excited state here looking like this. So these are potential energy surfaces. Associated with each potential energy surface is a vibrational energy level. It's not to scale. And also for the excited state, vibrational energy levels. And on each vibrational energy level, 
you get rotational energy levels. This is the ground state, so we'll put on here rotational energy levels. Put some here and some here. And same way for the ground, uh, for the excited state, we'll have rotational energy levels for each electronic and vibrational energy level, we'll have rotational energy levels. So we can look at transitions uh, here. That's just another way to look at it, superimposed upon the potential energy of the electronic. This would be ground state, excited state. Let's uh, look and see. For the electronic, we have UV visible radiation. Right, so UV visible, this is where electronic energy levels, if you shine light with this wavelength or with this frequency, you induce transitions between electronic energy levels. The uh, vibrational energy levels are infrared radiation. So now we're down here. So if you shine light on a molecule with 10 to the minus fifth meter or uh, around 10 to the 12th frequency, hertz frequency, then you induce transitions between vibrational energy levels. And then rotational energy levels, lower energy still, are microwave radiation down here, 10 to the minus 2 meter wavelength, or 10 to the 8th uh, in terms of frequency, 10 to the 8th hertz. Light with this, these characteristics will induce transitions between um, rotational energy levels. And then finally, we have the radio and microwave region down here. And this, these here will induce transitions between magnetic energy states when you talk about NMR and ESR. So different wavelengths or different wavelengths for different transitions. And unfortunately, for each spectroscopy, we have a different set of units. So when one does spectroscopy, one measures intensity versus energy. But this axis, this x-axis, uh, the units on here depend upon what kind of spectroscopy you're doing. For example, if you do rotational spectroscopy, this axis is frequency. And typical frequencies will be, um, say, megahertz uh, to gigahertz. If one is doing vibrational, spectroscopy. Uh, typically this is a uh, wave number nu which is defined as 1 over the wavelength lambda and typical units there are inverse centimeter. If one does electronic spectroscopy uh, that x-axis there is usually potted form of lambda and typical units for there are nanometer. If one does, uh, say, NMR, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, units there are frequency, which are megahertz, megahertz, that's an M. And if one does electron spin resonance, typical units there are magnetic field H, which is Gauss. Now, these five units are related uh, to energy by this equation here. Uh, e is equal to h nu is hc over lambda. 1 over lambda is, is given the symbol nu with a bar above it. And that is equal to, as we'll find out later, uh, some constants times the magnetic field h. All right, so that's a brief introduction to spectroscopy. I will now go on and look at, in more detail, transitions between these energy levels.